And what an exciting episode we have today. Welcome back to Beyond Sunday, where we take you inside the culture of Vox Church. Never a dull moment. Yeah, I was there waiting for go. something. You always say something. I was just waiting for it. And we have our lead pastor, Justin Kedrick, sitting across from me, socially distanced still, because we are in the office practicing protocol, making sure that everyone out there knows that. <laughs> that's, I mean, obviously, that's staying very, safe. Staying safe. You know, we were safe. just saying thankful that we have had no, you know, we have a large staff all over the place mm-hmm. trying to be careful, trying to follow all the protocols. We have had no... Uh, no issues. We did have one person early on, uh, a part-time member of our team from Stanford that did have COVID. She's good. Mm. She's good to go. Other than that, you know, she was quarantined. Other than that, we've been we've been healthy. Thank well, you, Jesus. I mean, the protocols here are, yeah. are pretty set in stone. Try to stay on top of things. Yeah. And I mean, even with all the micro churches and everything, I've seen, uh, you know, everyone has been abiding by totally. the rules and yeah, they're respectful. They're, you know, you see people, uh, you know, you can kind of tell, you could see it in their eyes, but yeah. at the same time, everyone has been following uh, all the rules, all the guidelines and everything. So shout out to your team. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah. Who's been putting all those out there, making sure everyone, and I've seen the videos that you guys have been putting out, kind of showing everyone what to do when yeah. you show up. Those yeah. are those are cool. Yeah, you know, just trying to make it uh, make it as you know as warm as possible in the midst of an awkward and cold time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so. we're still in. The, it's funny because I was thinking about as I was driving up here today, we had this conversation back in Ugh, in March, and we were just like, "Hey, you know, what do you think is going to happen?" Yeah, I it'll mean, be over in a week, fourteen days. You know, yeah. that's max. That and now we're sitting here seven months later, yeah, getting you know. ready for the holiday season, yeah. and you know, we're still practicing all the guidelines. We're still doing all that, but it's it's wild because. You know, and we've had this conversation in our podcast before, just the plans that we have and yeah. how irrelevant those plans are to it. God's oh my plan. Yeah, you know, and, and it's this has been a, a hard lesson in trusting Jesus, right? Because it's like we all make our strategies and our plans, and then we have to change them, and then we have to change them, and then we have to change them. And so it comes to that point where you have to say, God, you're in control. Yeah. You're in control, and I got to trust you with my life because uh, I don't get to, you know, pull the strings. Mm. Yeah. Well, so we have an interesting season coming up and tomorrow is actually election day. That's right. So Tuesday, election day, I just want to ask if you can just, uh, we're going to put this podcast up and people are probably thinking about what they're going to do tomorrow. Yep. So if you could just send out a quick prayer to those people, maybe that are even undecided or, you know, that are in a little bit of fear or turmoil, whatever it is that it may be just to kind of ease their hearts and ease their minds. Well, yeah, a thought and then a prayer, right? So, um, you know, our nation's pretty divided politically, right? There's no doubt about that. And I think one of the things that the body of Christ needs to mature in is that there are people who can see things very differently than I do, who still love Jesus, Mm -hmm. who are still brothers and sisters. So we should be passionate about our opinions. We should uh, be committed to our values and beliefs. All of that is true. There are some things that are absolute no-brainers for the kingdom of God and for Jesus, right? And so, you know, we believe in, um, you know, a life. We believe that a child is, you know, uh, from the moment they're conceived, you know, that they are a human being. So we believe that because the scripture teaches that we believe in the value of all people, every race, every person, male, female. So there are some things that are just simply, you know, biblical beliefs that we Mm -hmm. believe in. But as we wrestle with those things and we look at the politics of our day, we have to understand that people are going to come to different conclusions and that's tough, but we're still family, right? And so you look at like Jesus, for example, 12 disciples, he's got one who is Matthew the tax collector, which means he's pro-big government. Mm -hmm. He's working for Rome. He is actually a conduit of Roman rule. And then you've got Simon the Zealot. He is anti-government. He is overthrow the establishment. He is break free from Rome. And both of them are part of Jesus's 12. I bet they had some lively political discussions, (laughs) right? And so so the point that I'm trying to make is uh, when we put our ultimate hope in politics, uh, we're going to be disappointed. Yeah. I was I was just reflecting on Hebrews 12, and then we'll pray, but just this truth that says, uh, at that time a voice shook the earth, but now he has promised once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. And then uh, the writer says, the words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God. Mm. Acceptably, with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. And I just love that because what he's basically saying is, listen, God's in control. 
Uh, there's going to be a lot of people who are very excited at the end of the election. There's going to be a lot of people who are very disappointed. I remember the first election I was a part of, it was, uh, in other words, I was able to vote. It was Bush Gore. And I remember just thinking, I was, was going to say, don't date yourself. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I'm 38. <laughs> That's what it was. I was 18 and it was, it was Bush Gore. And I remember thinking, wow, how different will the world be now? And what I realized is I woke up the next day and it wasn't that different. Yeah. And then a month later, it wasn't that different. And so if, you know, if the, if you're passionate about politics, if your candidate wins, the world is not going to be completely different because of that. If your candidate loses, the world is not going to be completely different. I'm not saying it's irrelevant. I'm just saying that everything in this world that can be shaken will be shaken so that what can't be shaken, which is our relationship with Jesus mm. and eternity, uh, will remain. And yeah. so cling to the most unshakable thing. And that is Christ himself. Yeah. And then be involved, be passionate about your cause, be educated, you know, and, uh, but love your neighbor and don't, don't stop loving your neighbor for the sake of your political agenda. Mm. And that's really important. It, it burns me up when I see Christians forgetting to love their brothers and sisters and forgetting to love their enemies for the sake of politics. That is the most unbiblical mindset you could possibly have. And so, um, if, if your politics are compromising your character, you got to do some assessment. Mm. You got to do some assessment. And I was supposed to pray, so I didn't even pray yet. No, so, no, that's right. right. So, I mean, you're you're talking you're talking right to the people here. Yeah, it's you know, big. And, it's important, and it's it's good going well, into tomorrow and these. You know, just like what you said, whatever happens, happens. Whether right. we figure out what's going to happen, you know, on that Tuesday or however long it's going to take, you know, it's important to know the right. fact that just like what you said, you think about four years ago. Yep. You know, whoever you voted for, I right. mean, nothing drastically changed right. that moment. Right. You know, I mean. It, Yep. That's that's the thing. You're not going to wake up. Guess what? You know, you're still going to go to work. That's right. You know, that's you're still right. going to do this. You're still going to do that. That's right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, it's it's a word for somebody. Well, and I think when people are so passionate and so uh, divided, like they are politically right now, um, it's it's easy to lose perspective. And I guess the bigger question is, who are you at your core? Are you a Republican? Are you a Democrat? Or at your core, are you a child of God? Mm. And if your core identity is a child of God. Then those other things, though you, they may be important to you, which is fine, uh, don't define your state of being. Mm. And so it does. It's a bad example of the church when we are uh, hateful and angry towards each other in the midst of a political season. It's like, come on, guys, this yeah. is not the kingdom. The kingdom transcends everything on earth. Race, it transcends uh, political party, it transcends male, female, slave, free, old, young, every uh, thing that would seek to divide us, the blood of Jesus really is stronger. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I do think, though, this is an awesome moment for the church to actually live that, because yeah. uh, it's not always easy, but... Um, but this is our moment. So, yeah. yeah. And for me, I always think about big picture. You look at just our country, but there's the world beyond our country. And is there? Yeah. Americans forget sometimes. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. But so it just quickly talk about your, your missions trip, you know, yeah. that you went on this past yeah. year and yeah. talk about the influence that that had just on you personally. Oh yeah. Because if you put yourself outside and you know, maybe it'd be a good recommendation as yes. soon as everything settles down totally. to experience what that's like to see outside of the world. And I'm not talking about going to Paris and see the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> that's right. You know, we're talking about going to the people of right. this world right. who don't necessarily have the things that we have yeah. and, and showing them what true love totally. is. Well, and I think that, you know, one of the things that we as Americans, for all of us that are listening who are Americans, forget is that uh, that we are really living in an exceptionally privileged nation. Mm. And when you get outside that, my, my son and I were in Haiti this past year and uh, with, with a friend and doing some ministry there. And just the poverty that you see, the, um, the brokenness uh, functionally, societally, you know, I was talking with a guy there and I, he, was, he was talking about how he's just so hungry to learn. And I said, well, do you have a library you could go to? He said, oh no, there's no libraries. I can't, there's no library that I could go to anywhere. Mm -hmm. Then I said, are you serious? He said, yeah, there's, there's just nowhere that, that offers those things. And I said, well, and then we started talking about money and I said, well, do you have a bank? He said, no, I can't use a bank. People wait outside the bank to attack you and rob you. So, you know, I keep my money under my mattress. And it was just like question after question. And it just made me go, all right, all right. What was I complaining about? Yeah. You know, because whatever it was, it's pretty irrelevant mm. compared to what my brother's going through. And the tragedy is that so many of my Haitian brothers and sisters that I was able to hang out with during that time uh, shamed Americans in their level of joy, contentment, mm. peace, gratitude, uh, so much more mature in those areas uh, with so much less. Mm -hmm. And it was just that sober reminder. It was great for my son who's 14 to, to just be there and be like, 
yeah, maybe that Xbox game is not that important. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, and so it's just a we got to get our heads straight, you yeah. know, and that's a big part of it is seeing beyond ourselves. And it's it's funny because I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine uh, who is actually from Africa, and he was explaining the mm-hmm. faith that his people have. Yeah. And he was explaining the difference between Americans yep. and his people. Yeah. So when someone gets sick, they're a day's walk away from a doctor. Yep. So the entire time they're praying, they're yep. walking uh, all the way to a doctor, hoping and praying yeah. and giving the the life of the sick person to the Lord yeah. and saying, God, save my save yeah. my child, save yep. my child. And they would show up and he was telling me stories. And mm. this is, I, honestly, this is the most incredible thing I've ever heard. He was telling me stories of how he knew someone who walked for three days, who had a, who had a dead child, wow. dead three wow. days all the way. And to see that that child was healed by the pastor, they walked to the church, oh, not even to a doctor. Man. So three days having the faith and having, you know, can you even imagine? Yeah. I mean, us as Americans right now, we think, oh, you know, we, we have a cult. Yeah. Let's go, you know, to the medicine cabinet. Right. If that doesn't work, let's go to the doctor. If that doesn't work, let me check WebMD, right. figure out what I right. have. I mean, it's and Then almost, after that, maybe I'll pray. Yeah, oh, I forgot. I know. Yeah. I mean, it, it blew my mind listening yeah. to the stories that this gentleman had had i was sitting there in awe and i was just thinking to myself man how lucky are we and Mm. and you know and this all circles back to being an american but how lucky are we to live in this country where we have the capabilities and we have the wherewithal to to get all yeah to get all of that but we don't realize that outside of this beautiful land that there's a world out there that's that's hurting right Right. So, I mean, this isn't at all where I wanted to go with the no, podcast. No, you're right, but. though. No, and, and I think it's really important for Americans, especially in the midst of tumultuous, difficult times like we're living right now, to see outside ourselves and just simply remember mm-hmm. and, and get some perspective. I have this book. It's called Operation World. I would highly recommend it. It just has every day you pray for a different country. Mm. And so, um, you know, I was praying for uh, Slovakia yesterday and just learning about Slovakia. I don't know a whole lot about Slovakia, (laughs) but I, you know, it gives you three or four pages and then it gives you a bunch of prayer needs. And I've just been taking time, maybe four or five times a week to just pray for whatever the day that country is. And it forces you outside yourself, see into the world of another person, into Mm. the world of another people. Remember that there's a world beyond this world that we're living in and uh, remind yourself uh, the blessings, the favor that we have, the opportunity that we have, even in the midst of all of our brokenness and issues we need to fix, um, we do need to be thankful for what God's given us. Yeah. And then, yeah, we do need to fight for justice and for it to be better. Um, but um, we do need to be grateful. Yeah. And it's just so important. Mm. So important. Well, it's powerful. Yeah. So if you want to... Let's just, pray. Yeah. yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace on this land. We thank you, God, that you're at work. And so we pray right now for this nation. God, we pray as we hand into election Tuesday that uh, that you would supernaturally unite people. And God, we just we cry out for the church in Jesus' name. God, we cry out that your people would be a different kingdom. Lord, that we would look different, that we would talk different, that we would act different, God. Lord, that we would participate in the freedoms that we have to vote as Americans, but we would also understand that ultimately we are citizens of another place. God, that we are called to be citizens of heaven and that our our hope is rooted in Jesus Christ alone. Mm-hmm. I pray that you would tie the church together. Jesus, you said that we're a body, like a hand and a foot, that we are connected. I pray that, God, we would not think of ourselves as individuals on our own island against other people, but that we would see ourselves as one family united. Lord, I just pray against that lie that says, I have to agree with you on everything before I'm a part of the family of God. Lord, that is just not the case. I pray that we would learn to to love our brothers and sisters, even when we don't see eye to eye on everything, that we would be rooted and grounded in the main thing, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Lord, strengthen your church even now during this time. And let us be a light on a hill, a city on a hill uh, for a, a lost world that is in desperate need of hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you Amen. for that because we're yeah. going to go in tomorrow with, you know, ready to rock and, Tip. you know, we'll see what happens. So yeah. a couple big events that are coming up. We'll yes. start with November 15th. We have some yeah. baptisms. We talked a little bit about this last time. We do. So November 15th, where are the baptisms going to be? Yeah. Held? So we're going to have it at our Brantford office and at Middletown. So Brantford office is pretty small. We have uh, some, some registration you can do online. Just jump on register for that. If you're going to come to Brantford, register. If you're going to get baptized, you also need to register and Mm -hmm. then uh, registering for Middletown as well. So yeah, just encourage everybody listening, 
be a part of these baptisms. It's going to be an awesome mm-hmm. celebration. Yeah. Time of worship. I'm going to share a word, and then we're going to just participate in that sacred opportunity to baptize some people, mm-hmm. and uh, it's going to be great. So, awesome. yeah, looking and forward December to it. And December 13th, we have Vision Sunday. So tell yeah. me a little bit about what... So we talked about this last time, but someone asked me, what is Vision Sunday? Yes. What, what does that entail? I am so excited. This yeah. is my favorite thing in the whole world. You know, uh, the scripture talks about how the people perish for lack of vision, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, being able to see where we go and what's next. Uh, one of the you know challenging things of COVID-19 has been just the lack of visibility. I can't see five feet in front of me, you know, what's mm-hmm. going to happen next. And so we've been praying as a staff, as leadership uh, at the church, really what's next, where are we going? Last year, we really outlined a plan uh, for the, the future of our church in terms of strengthening our current ministries, launching our anchor location in new churches, establishing a site acquisition fund. It's been amazing Mm. to see how much ground has miraculously been taken in the midst of a strange, unexpected year. And so I'm going to just be reporting. I'm going to be giving a ton of stats about, hey, here's where we've been, church, and Mm. what's happened. And then I'm going to talk about where we're going and really, really excited to share some of that um, and just really what has God put on our hearts, what doors has he opened for our future as a church, and uh, and where are we going. So that's all on Vision Sunday, December 13th. You got to be there. Hey. Got to be there. It's going to be great. That's right around Christmas. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Christmas is coming. I'm just saying. Kurt's birthday is yeah, on Christmas. Let's go. So uh, let's the whole go. world revolves around Christmas. Yeah. That's awesome. It. So what, we actually asked uh, some of the listeners to write in some questions. Great. And I have some great questions. And trust me, they're all over the spectrum. That's all right. So for the last bit of today's podcast, we're going to have a little bit of fun and talk about some things. Let's do it. That are just, you know, well, I guess we'll see. So we'll dive in. So Good. our first question is from Josh in New Haven. Yes. He wants to know. He said, hey, JK, what would your perfect day look like? Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I didn't get, trust me, guys, I didn't give him any of these questions. No. These are all on the No, spot. he never I, gives me I anything. Never do. Yeah, never so do. Um, my perfect day, you know, um, I honestly, so my perfect day would probably start, it would definitely start alone. You know, I'm a big uh, alone time guy. Mm-hmm. I want an hour or more alone with Jesus. I feel like, you know, sometimes you wake up and you just got crazy in your head and you got to you got to go and be with Jesus and yeah. recenter my your life. So um, I always start my day alone um, and uh, and seeking God. And so that would certainly be the beginning of my day. The problem is after that, I really do like variety. You yeah. know, I'd like to mix it up. I mean, I love a good uh, a good workout with some friends. Yep. So I would love to get some exercise in and do something active and physical. Uh, and then I love uh, my wife. So I would say um, some, you know, um, some activity with my wife <laughs> that I could, you know, we we'll could call put some it, language we'll around call that. We'll call it breakfast. Yeah, we'll we could breakfast. breakfast and other aerobic <laughs> activities would be great. Uh, so that would be a part of my perfect day. And then um, probably some time with friends, you know, some yeah. time with friends around a fire or something like that mm. uh, would be something that I love. And then I would end the day with more time alone. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I'm a simple person and I, I, love, um, I love close relationship and I really do thrive in times of solitude. So it would be a mixture of that. And I do like food. So I would yeah. say that a uh, critical element of my perfect day would be... Um, some food. Some food. A Some little caveat food. to that. What would what would be the number one food item? Well, it depends on if I'm trying to be uh, this diligent. Is, nope. Or, this is this is you know this it's is not going to affect charts. you at all. Man, I'm a I'm I'm actually like a steak and fries guy. Yeah. So like I would like an awesome steak and some fries and some broccoli mm. is like literally my favorite meal. All and right. So uh, you know um, you know your mom can bring some. Yeah. That's like a that's like a a Teresa <laughs> meal yeah, right Teresa, there. She you got know, a shout out. She's gonna be so pumped. She's, I'm telling you. I mean, she's the queen. So. Um, that's funny. So that, you know, uh, that is like my favorite meal. But other than that, uh, yeah, I'm easy. I mean, it could be burgers. It could be whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So Maddie in Bridgeport asked this, and I thought I thought long and hard about this. Yeah. If you could ask God one question, what would that one question be? Mm, and I, yeah. I, you know, I thought about this and I was like, man, how do you limit yeah. it to one question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why did he make men smell? And women with a much stronger nose. What's up with that? I think women can smell four times what a man can smell. Why is it that the men are the stinky ones and the women are the wind with the great oh, with the great nose? That's so valid. No, I probably wouldn't ask that. Yeah. But but that is a mystery to me. Like what 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 was the reason for that? Yeah, I could tell you've contemplated this question <laughs> yeah. before. Yeah, that's one that you know that no. I mean, uh, one question uh, one question that I would ask God. I would, you know, I would. Uh, I would probably say, if he's seen the beginning from the end, which mm-hmm. he has, I would say, Lord, how how will you maximize your glory 
through all the challenges and suffering of this world. Mm-hmm. And I know he has an answer. That's not a doubting question. Yeah. That's not like a question like, oh, I can't believe that you'll do it. You just want to um, have the big picture. I just want to see it. Yeah. I just want to see like, Lord, give me a glimpse of how your glory will be even sweeter in light of all the challenge and struggle that this world brings. Because I know it will be. I know it will be. The yeah. cross um, is the ultimate sacrifice and brings the ultimate glory. And mm-hmm. it teaches us that principle, that great sacrifice really does end gloriously. But I'd love to see it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right. So John in Middletown, he wants to know, <laughs> and this is a little bit of a transition here. What is your <laughs> biggest pet peeve? I'll uh, tell. I mean, I'll tell you mine. Yeah. And go ahead. Some, you tell me yours. And for some reason, yeah. my daughter does this all the time. She just chews with her mouth open, and it's always. Mm. It just seems to amplify to the utmost. And yeah. oh man, that that gets me going. You know, this is going to sound really spiritual since yours was so shallow. But um, <laughs> but you know, it's like I um. I don't get annoyed that easily. Oh. I really don't. Like, I, I mean, I'm trying to think of something, but like, here's the deal. Uh, actually, I do have something, but I'll get back in a second. Yeah. Um, but honestly, like I, I made a, a decision a long time ago, like I am going to be a person who is hard to offend, you know? And so I try to live my life like, and those that know me well know this is true. You're going to really, really have to work to offend me. Mm. And if you do offend me, I'm going to talk to you about it. Yeah. So you never have to wonder, oh, is Justin offended at me? No, no, you'll know. <laughs> yeah. if, if, first of all, I'm probably not. Second of all, if you are, you'll know because I'll talk to you about it. But so not a lot of stuff bothers me. Um, I would say that one thing that bothers me, and my staff knows this, is if you show up for a meeting and you're unprepared, I'm a little ticked. Yeah. <laughs> Don't waste my time. <laughs> so if you're wasting my time by going, oh, well, we didn't get to that. and blah, 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 Well, then why am I sitting here talking to you? Yeah. You know, come prepared or don't come at all. And so uh, that would be something that in an, in an organizational setting, uh, when a person sits down and they're supposed to have a presentation, they're supposed to have done research, if they're baloneying their way, yeah. that's not a word, but through the meeting, I am not happy. Should we send this podcast out to the staff? Oh, they already know. <laughs> you don't have to tell them. They already know. If, you, if they ever came unprepared to a meeting, they learned quickly, oh, this is not a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's this funny. Is, this is All right, so Tanya in Stanford wants to know, if you were on an island and you can bring with you <laughs> one song, one book, and one movie, what would those three oh, be? And that's all you get. And I we're, mean, we're going to say, we're going to give you a year on the island. We'll, oh, we'll give it a, a, so one, one song, yeah. one book and one movie. Well, yeah, definitely the Bible. I mean, no, I yeah, but cheesy. The, yeah. Bible excluded. Bible. Excluded? Yeah. She actually wrote that. I forgot to write that in there. Bible excluded. Oh gosh. Yeah. Well, uh, oof. yeah, maybe confessions from Augustine. Um, something deep, something that I could live in for a while. Yeah. Um, maybe the city of God. You know, uh, those are, those are both from Augustine or, um, yeah, uh, something that you could really live in for a while, um, that I would, I would want to, want to just take time to meditate on in terms of a book. Uh, one song, uh, boy, oh boy. Uh, it would definitely, it would definitely be a a worship song because, uh, I'm going to want to spend a lot of time worshiping Jesus. Uh, you know what's a great song is that song Abba. It's an older song, but it's like Abba, I belong to you. I like that one. Yeah. It just kind of chills. Right. It's been around for a long time, but that was one that I could live with for a while if I had to. And then what else do I get? Uh, you get one movie. A movie? Yeah, a movie. Oh boy, just one movie on repeat. Oh jeez. <laughs> uh, it would be the Return of the King, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. That one I can watch okay. again and again. Yeah, but there's so many before and after, aren't there? Or yeah, is that the last no, one? No, that is the last one. Oh, yeah, that's but I've seen one. the ones before. Okay. So I'm just going to live just, when the king comes back. Got it. That's going to just Got get it. me through. So. <laughs> it's not going to be Miracle? No, it's yeah. not going to be Miracle. <laughs> the 1980 US <laughs> We need to play good hockey. <laughs> No, it's not going to be a miracle. Oh, Kurt, man. still got professional dreams. <laughs> He's still going to still going. the Olympics. That, hey, you don't have to tell me. That's right. All right, so Tanya in uh, Middletown wants to know, this is actually a really good question. Yeah. If you could be in the Bible during one event, what event oh, would that be? Wow. I know. And, and this one, I was like, hey. I you mean, know, the resurrection of Jesus. Yeah. I have to say, yeah. I'd want to be in the room when Jesus walked through the wall and said, hey, uh, Thomas, come over here and put your hand in my scar. Mm. That to me would be like the most amazing place yeah. to ever be physically, is to be standing in that room when Jesus walks in and says, uh, hey, can you stop doubting, please? And yeah. just says, I think it's John 21, uh, just says, um, you know, come here, mm. put your hand in where the where the side i mean there's just so much prophetic right so like the ark here's get get crazy right yeah. the ark of the covenant had a door uh, excuse me the ark that noah built 
had a door on the side mm. because Christ was going to get a cut in his side from the spear mm. to fulfill Psalm 22, the one whom you pierced, right? And so uh, blood and water flows because he died from a broken heart. And here he goes to Thomas, put your hand in my side. Mm. I mean, it's just like, that's yeah. a moment. So that's a moment. So to put one more on that. So let's just take the the life of Jesus All right. out of the picture. All right. And, and, and that's, a, that's a good one. Entirely? A, yeah, it, entirely. Okay. We're talking about, you know, before or after yeah, the Gospels. Okay. All right. Um, mm, burning bush. Yeah. Yeah. I, I it's so. so funny that you said that. I was, I was thinking you might say that. You know, I mean, burning bush, you got to remember, this is where God revealed to Moses the essence of his identity. People didn't really know who God was up until this point. And they, he said, I need a name. Give me a name. And, Mo, and he said to Moses, I am who I am, yeah. right? The I am, the same name Jesus uses when he says, I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd, always using ego on me, which is the, the, the tetragrammaton, the, uh, the name of God. Um, Yahweh, it's later translated, yeah. Jehovah. Uh, but it is this it is this mysterious name that simply means I always have been, I always will be, I am unchanging, I am ultimate reality. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those moments where if someone was to make up the Bible, they would have never come up with that. Yeah. Like those are the moments that you read the scriptures and you go, there's something here that is not man-made. Because if you're going to name a God, think about it. Every culture, every world, every uh, society has always had gods and they've always had names. Yeah. When the Hebrews name a God, they call him I am that I am. <laughs> That's not a name. Yeah. <laughs> and yet only God would say something like yeah. that. And so it's just, uh, yeah, that was a moment. Mm. All right. Well, I mean, that's that's a good one. That's I a good so. answer. Yeah. So, Steve, the resurrection from, wasn't a good answer. No, it was. That was okay. really good. All right, all I right. mean, but that was kind of like a layup. Yeah, yeah. You know, alley -oop. Alley -oop. Yeah. All right. So, Steve from Springfield wants to know if you could be one profession besides a pastor, what would you have be? I mean, and oh, this is all. Boy. This is all kind of. You know, you are. You know, Pastor J.K. We yeah. all get it. But yeah. you know, when you were maybe six before yeah. you had your big dreams, <laughs> what what was it <laughs> that you wanted to be? Uh, yeah. Oh boy, I know. Day before elections, election Tuesday. I I I'd, I'd probably do politics. Politics. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> oh gosh. I mean, I love the idea. Yeah. Of just you know bringing about positive change through legislation, but I, I made a decision a long time ago. Which direction am I going to go? And I decide I'm not going to go both. Yeah. I'm going to really uh, focus on uh, ministering to people's hearts because I think that you know the heart change is more powerful than any any uh you know uh, outward change although the other the other you know policy change is important but heart change is even more important in yeah. my opinion and so um well it's, yeah, it's kind of it's basketball kinda coach basketball coach <laughs> bobby knight <laughs> 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 or coach we'll, we'll say coach um coach k coach k coach yeah k. he's a nice guy yeah he's a nice guy i actually um, met him he's a really nice guy yeah i mean honestly i would actually i would actually love to um i mean don't get me wrong i'm gonna pastor for the rest of my life i yeah. really believe that but i would i would run a business and yeah. really care for my employees well and do something that uh makes a difference in people's lives in a positive way. Yeah. I feel like that would be a good use of my skills. I actually love the the CEO side of the job, the mm -hmm. organizational structure, the leadership, the management side. I, I really enjoy that. I'm wired for it. Yeah. So yeah, if I got to do that, I'd get something. Awesome. But, yeah. Interesting. So uh, before we cut off here, I have a yep. bunch of other questions. I can save them from next time. But right. Deb from the North Campus wants to know, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Mm. not from i mean yeah it's easy yeah um i uh i was i was frustrated as a young christian and couldn't really seem to connect with god mm -hmm. and i you know i tried a bunch of stuff but god just seemed distant god just seemed far away and i was sitting with my friend his name's nick a couple years older than me and i said nick man i just try i, I don't know i just feel like i'm far from god i feel like you know everybody else has these experiences and yeah. i and i don't really have any experiences with god i feel like i've just I read the bible i you know, and he said something that has stuck with me for 20 years. He said, Justin, those who find God, find time. Mm. And, and what he meant was, listen, if you're going to ever know God, if you're ever going to really know him, you got to make time for it. Yeah. And you can't do it vicariously through your spouse, or you can't do it through osmosis by hanging out with Christians. That's important. But ultimately, you got to get on the backside of the desert and you got to find God yourself. Yeah. And so go and lock yourself in your room and wait till he talks to your heart. You know, go on a long walk and wait till he speaks and you might walk out more confused than you came in. But if you keep seeking him, you'll find him. And so just this idea that you can't, you can't hand off the responsibility of actually knowing God personally. Mm -hmm. 
Those who find God find time. That piece of advice changed my life because I went out and I found God. Yeah. I mean, I think he found me, but I, but I, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but it you changed the way I, heart for that. it changed yeah. the way I thought about my relationship with yeah. him. I stopped looking for somebody else to do it for me. Yeah. Well, what a way to end it. That's I'm it. not kidding. Yeah. All right. So guys, if I didn't get to your questions, my apologies, we are stockpiling some of these questions and we will do this again because it's a lot of fun to sit here and just grill. Yeah. Pastor Justin Lots of Kendrick. Time. Yeah, <laughs> so time. we appreciate you guys. And again, if you want to reach us, we're at beyond Sunday at voxchurch.org and we will be happy to get back to you. JK, thanks so much for being here. Enjoy. And we will see you guys next week.